Hi, I'm Dr. Tim Kaczynski, a general dentist practicing outside of the Detroit area in Bingham Farms, Michigan. Today's topic will be atraumatic extractions, where we can predictably remove teeth where our patients have a positive response to our actions. But many of our patients are very apprehensive about such treatment. And many dentists, many general dentists, just don't like to remove teeth. And why would that be? Well, our patients are afraid because of bad experiences they've had in the past. And dentists don't necessarily like to take difficult teeth out because, just as I said, they're difficult. So we're gonna do step-by-step -step demonstrations and hopefully you'll be able to refresh your memory by reviewing this DVD frequently when you're doing a procedure and try to give you techniques that are incredibly predictable. Here we have a patient that presents with a maxillary right cuspid tooth that is fractured and was deemed non-restorable. We want to atraumatically remove this tooth. What does atraumatic mean? Well, we want it to be atraumatic for the patient as far as any discomfort goes. We want it atraumatic for us, the dentist, so that we don't have to, to work too hard in removing this tooth. But even most importantly, we want to remove the tooth atraumatically and maintain that facial plate of bone. It's imperative as we're considering this patient for a single dental implant, an immediate single implant, that we maintain that facial plate of bone as possible. But we're also aware that in the maxillary cuspid area, the bone can be very, very thin. So let's demonstrate a technique where we can remove a tooth that was deemed non-restorable easily using the innovative physics forcep. The tooth has a fracture, root canal and a post, and a fracture and is decayed. And you can see here from our CBCT from Vatec that we have a tooth that, that has a very thin facial plate of bone. And to remove this tooth can be very difficult for us as dentists. Number one, traditionally we would use a, a, a periotome to break down the periodontal ligament, maybe take an elevator, but we have crown and bridge on either side of this broken down fractured tooth. So removing it needs to be very, very, we need to be very careful in removing the tooth. Here we want to use the innovative physics forcep to remove this maxillary cuspid tooth atraumatically. The physics forcep consists of two components. The beak, which will engage the palatal surface of the tooth, one to three millimeters subgingival. We want to try to engage the root structure rather than the margin of the crown. If we engage the margin of the crown, especially on a tooth that has a post, we'll probably remove the crown first, which is fine. But in the technique, we want to engage the beak, which is a flattened plate, onto the palatal surface. And we're going to place the second part of the instrument, the bumper, as high up the vestibule as possible. Now this instrument is rather unique in that we're not using any force to remove the tooth. So I'm not squeezing the handles. Rather, I'm having the beak engage the palatal surface of the root. And then I'm going to rotate my wrist here towards the corner of the right eye, only my wrist, not squeezing the handle so there's no bicep, forearm, shoulder pressure whatsoever. The handles are simply holding the instrument in place. And we're going to use rotational force to create tension onto the palatal surface of this root. So we're actually going to rotate this tooth up and out of the socket. The tension created by the beak is going to physiologically create an enzymatic action that will re reduce or remove the periodontal ligament. It will actually resorb the periodontal ligament uh, away. Thus the tooth will be released and will come out of the socket fairly easily. So we're taking our pressure, taking tension from the beak, and you can see I'm not putting any pressure whatsoever on the handles. The handles are there to hold the instrument rotating my wrist and the tooth will actually disengage up and out of the socket. The instrument is not intended to remove the tooth in total, rather to disengage it. And I will take what we call a tooth delivery instrument that will engage the root and will simply rotate that tooth out of the socket. You can see it's a fairly long cuspid tooth and we were able to remove it 
without damaging the facial bone, plate of bone. Here's a periodontal uh, radiograph demonstrating that. Now, in this situation, we're going to immediately place an implant, and what I want to do is demonstrate that the facial plate is indeed intact. So I'm making a little envelope flap, um, not placing any vertical incisions whatsoever, and I'm actually elevating the soft tissue, the attached gingiva, away from the bone, both facially and palatally. And you can see clearly that the facial bone is intact, um, which creates a four-wall defect. We have a socket that should be very easy to uh, restore, to graft and place an implant. So let's look at our second CBCT that demonstrates that indeed the facial bone is intact. It's very, very thin, but it's intact, and it makes our, our process that much easier. So the innovative physics forcep allowed us to remove this tooth atraumatically for the patient in a matter of minutes, atraumatically for the doctor, and most importantly for me as the implant surgeon to maintain that facial plate of bone. We're going to go ahead and elevate the palatal surface and again when we use a membrane we're going to have to engage at least two millimeters of solid bone as we're placing our, our membrane. We're going to use the implant direct system here and I'm simply measuring the root of the tooth that we're replacing. We're going to do our osteotomies by uh, engaging our pilot drill about three millimeters palatal to the facial aspect of the adjacent teeth and simply go to one size to the larger size until we get to the correct size of implant that we want. Um, we're going to create a socket site. We're using our resorbable membrane and again I'm placing the membrane so that it engages minimally two millimeters of solid bone. It's pre-cut so that it will be passively placed both facially and palatally on the surface of the tooth. We're using a crunch putty are a putty mixture of allograft, um, human bone. We're filling the socket with our material, packing it in gently, and I'm going to immediately place my dental implant, torquing it into position. The implant is placed subcrestal into the socket, and our membrane is passively placed onto the palatal surface of the socket site. Interdental papilla is maintained, interceptal bone is maintained, and again that facial bone was maintained nicely using the physics forcep. We're going to suture the area and what I recommend is that you engage the coronal or crustal portion first and go from the crustal to the facial. That way with the reverse cutting needle you're not going to grab onto that passively placed resorbable membrane and you're able to very easily um, place our sutures nicely. Then palatally do the same thing. Go from the crestal to the facial, uh, to the palatal, thus the, the passively placed membrane is intact. Here you can see I'm just placing some sutures, maintaining the, the uh, interdental papilla, uh, and passively placing the, the sutures so that they will not be removed if the patient lifts their lip or, or takes a look at it. The implant is placed slightly palatally. For more information and to watch several more clinical videos, please visit physicsforceps.com or call 1-877-987-2284.